My name is Heidi and welcome back to Books and Cables. Um, I'm usually found by the same name on both Ravelry and Instagram. And today what I'm going to talk to you about while I knit on this sock is my Make 9 for next year. So uh, I have it down here on my leg so I don't forget all of them. Uh, and I think at the end of the video I'm also going to talk to you about my general yarny New Year's resolutions. So um, the first pattern that I really want to make for next year is the Rose Cardigan by Andrew Mowry. Um, it's going to be my first fully seamed garment. That's not for a child. I did do a child's cardigan earlier, but it'll be the first fully seamed cardigan. As much as I love doing things that are seamless and minimal finishing, um, one of the benefits of having seams is that it adds structure and um, longevity to your um, garments that you make. And it this particular pattern uses exposed seam as a design detail. So I think it'll be really special. It's fairly plain, except for the shawl collar, which has the cable on it and the cable that's go, going up the arms. I'm thinking this is going to be a long-term project because it has, it does involve a lot of flat stocking net knitting and um, not very fast at that. And I think I would get annoyed after a while. So I think it's going to be a, a slow project. Technically, I'm also not casting it on next year because I'm casting it on, on December 24th as part of the knit along that I am participating in with a bunch of local knitting folks. And that is at the hashtag Mocha Loca Christmas Madness Cal. It's quite long, yes, and we're just using the hashtag to keep up with each other. We're all casting on on the same day on December 24th, and um, that, and we have a year to finish whatever we started. So um, that's going to be my project for that. But because it's like I said, a long-term situation, um, I'm going to count it as my 2019 Make Nine. The second pattern that I'm going to be doing for next year, it is the, what is it called? Knitorious RBG. So um, I'm going to put a picture of it again. It is a pattern that's inspired by the Supreme Court Justice um, uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg in the United States. So the designer um, kind of it was inspired by her as a person, but also the shop, the many collars that she wears. So one of the ones that she's famous for is the descent collar, which she wears when she has a dissenting opinion. And um, more famously, she wore it the day after the American election of a certain orange man that we're not gonna get into here. Um, and the pattern sales, she's the designer Parker, I believe her name is. Um, all of the details will be below as usual. Um, we'll be donating two dollars from the sales to the um, it's the American Civil Liberties Association. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, so I bought it, and it's beautiful because it uses this sort of balloon sleeves detail to really elevate what is a very plain sweater except for, so balloon detail, balloon sleeves, and then it's just plain stocking net, and then it has the, a little collar, which is uh, inspired by RBD. So that's the second pattern that I'm going to be doing. And the third pattern, so this is, is this a Caitlin Hunter heavy list? No, there's only two. Originally it was a Caitlin Hunter heavy list, but so the third um, design that I want to be knitting this year it is the, I don't remember what this is called. I should have looked this up. I'm a professional. Um, so I'm going to look it up quickly, but you'll see a picture of it at least. Um, Willow Wood by Caitlin Hunter. So it is, so maybe I'm really interested in sleeve details this year. After doing so many yokes as a centerpiece, um, I found this to be very striking in that it adds the color work along the sleeves and also in the neck and then the rest of it is just plain. And what I like about this pattern and also this entire issue of um, Pom Pom Magazine, which it comes out of, is just the kind of drama 
that is in every pattern because I think I'm not a very shy dresser, I suppose. I like kind of wild patterns and after you've done a few yoke sweaters you kind of you know it feels a little bit same same so I think this year is going to be where I focus on kind of different construction styles and so this one with its balloon sleeves although it's still a yoke I believe um it's gonna be a nice um palette cleanser let's say so that is the third pattern that I'm planning on doing. Number four on my Make Nine is The Sleet by Marie Wallen. Um, so this is, it's got a lovely boat neck and um, it's full color work. I think except for the sleeves will be plain, but it's full color work down the body. And what's special about it is you also hold a strand of mohair through it. So it's got, it's a very like vintage look and um, just you got the nice halo as well as the color work. It's not very complicated color work. It's kind of the argyle, is that what they're, it's called? It's like diamonds. And then it makes this sort of a light blue with a dark green and a dark blue. And so I just, I like the way that it looks and um, the yarn that I'm gonna be using for it, I believe is Hoskarn, which is a yarn company that I'm really interested in investigating in for next year, mainly because of cost, because being honest with you, be, having Brooklyn Tweed Loft as my favorite yarn is not the best for the wallet, considering how prolific I am at making sweaters. So I think part of my next year is finding a staple yarn, which will not, um, limit the number of projects I can actually take on because we're kind of at the point this year where I'm like, oh, maybe I should knit less. But so I'm going to look into this kind of cheaper alternative because I'm, I don't believe in the idea that just because something's cheap doesn't mean it's not good. So I think that's a really exciting um, option and I've heard a lot of good things about it um, from people. So I think Part of its cost, so uh, I don't know if I said it's 360 for 50 grams of 300 yards. So that compare that to the $20 that you pay for a skein of Brooklyn Tweed Yard, uh, Brooklyn Tweed Loft at the same yardage. So I'm gonna look into that. If I like it, it might turn into my staple yarn. The one thing is I do have to import it from Denmark, and so I might combine orders just so I'm not shipping so many things because one of the other things I would like to do this year is to buy more local if possible for environmental reasons. So anyway, back to my Make Nine, Sleet is the fourth one. And the fifth pattern I would like to do is from the same issue of Pom Pom as the Caitlin Hunter pattern I mentioned earlier, and that is the cover photo, which is Nightingale. It is designed by Nora Gon, who's famous for her sort of lush textures and um, sort of statement pieces where she paints a picture with cables. Um, I actually have her cable source book, which is fantastic and really goes through the way that cables are constructed so that you can kind of play with them and kind of design your own. So I really love, again, this issue. I think they called, they, they called the mood board for it like Victorian warrior. So lots of like florals, but also um, very feminine, but mi mixed with a sort of um, strength. So it's very like, um, maybe Valkyrie stuff. Anyway, it's, it's beautiful. If you haven't seen this issue of Pom Pom, I definitely recommend it. And rec uh, this Nightingale pattern is one that I would love to do this year. Um, I don't know if I mentioned for the willow wood, actually going back to the willow wood, I'm also going to be using another, another Hoskarn yarn for that, which is, it has 95% Geelong, which is some, some kind of sheep and 5% cashmere because I kind of want a little bit of luxury in that one. And for Nightingale, I'm thinking I might use the original yarn, which is the Quince & Co because, um, for cables, you kind of want a very 
like a smooth and twisty yarn to kind of bring out the texture. So I haven't really found an alternative to the Quince and Co. And the Quince and Co. is actually pretty good price-wise at $12 a skein. So as you can tell, um, pricing is currently a big consideration for me as I want to make this hobby mm, back to fun again and not just... Okay, so while, like taking a step back, I really don't apologize for what I spend on the knitting hobby. First of all, because I it's my money, but also second, it's my the only thing I spend money on, uh, and also it makes me happy. So I'm not, and considering I don't go out and all of those things, I'm perfectly happy to invest in my knitting. However. I'm just too prolific for my own damn good. So next year, price is definitely consideration and cashmere for $5 a skein is not super bad. I'm gonna try to stop talking about cost from now on because I think it's not very interesting <laughs> to constantly be like, oh, it's too expensive. But there we are, especially because I really believe in supporting the yarny business and I don't ever wanna complain about price because even at the cost they are, it doesn't really, it's still maybe not enough. Anyway, um, the th sixth pattern that I want to make for next year is the, um, I hope I pronounced this right, it's the Skogafiel by Diana Walla. So it is the sort of, it's like a gradient tree and it's just a yoke sweater. I think I'm going to do it in Let Lopi, which is the recommended yarn, because it does make this nice fuzzy halo. It's good for outerwear while still being lightweight. So that is going to be on my list. And another Diana Walla pattern for my seventh one, which is Ebba. And that is kind of, it looks like when you think Norwegian sweater. Or Norwegian colorwork sweater. It's so this this particular pattern I'm really interested in because it does shoulder steaks. So you knit the whole thing in the round, and it's um like a kind of a drop shoulder but with, with a boat neck. And for this, you have to cut open the arms and then pick up the stitches and knit down, rather than um, what you would normally do would be to kind of start knitting flat once you get to the arms or do it as a yoke. So it, it allows you to do the drop shoulder, but still continue to knit in the round. So that's really interesting. Um, the eighth one is the Yell cardigan by Marie Wallen. So a second Marie Wallen pattern. This one I'm interested in because of the um, shape of it. It has the sort of wide panels on the side, which really shows off the color work, um, but it also has kind of tight fitted sleeves. So it's a very kind of loose, it's very similar, I think, in feel to the rose cardigan. And um, I just need more cardigans in my life. So that one is going to be something that I think I'm going to make. And for that, I'm going to use Jameson of Shetland. And there's a local company here in Ottawa, which has the full range of um, Jameson, I think both Jameson and Smith and Jameson and Shetland, the two Shetland yarn producers, very confusing that their names so similar things, as well as just general color work stuff. Her name is Deb, her company is Sheeps Ahoy, and she does kits for uh, a lot of patterns, including a bunch of Marie Wallens. So I'm going to be purchasing a Yell cardigan kit from her, which makes it super easy because there's like 12 colors in this pattern and having to go one by one would be, it's too much. So that's fantastic. And the final item, another Caitlin Hunter, is um, the Aliesca. This one I'm, I find really interesting because it is full color work, but it actually does like a, uses a mohair in the yoke section as part of the, um, features. So um, it's like an interesting textural change around the shoulders. So I think that'll be fun to have. So those are my 
nine items that I want to make for next year. Please let me know what's in your make nine for next year. Um, I would love to hear from you on that. And uh, as usual, you can find me at Books and Cables on both Ravelry and Instagram. And you can check out my blog, which is knittightly.com, where I am showcasing kind of the extraordinary stories behind ordinary people and also kind of the diversity of the knitting community. So thank you for joining me and um, watch out for my other kind of year-end review video where I'm going to talk about all the things I finished this year. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!